So now we're going to do the E1 mechanism, okay? And after this part, you guys should be able to see some key differences and key similarities with E2 and E1 and be able to distinguish the mechanisms nice and easy. All right, so here's our substrate, same thing as before. We don't need to worry about anti-beta hydrogens. I'll show you why in a bit. But what's going to be our first step, right? It's, is it going to be the tert, meth, uh, tert butanol over here grabbing the hydrogens? Well, in this case here, remember, our base is now mild. It's not unstable and reactive like tert butoxide. It no longer has the motivation to attack and grab hydrogens as much as tert butoxide did, because tert butoxide was unstable. Tert, tert butanol is stable, it's neutral, it's not the most reactive molecule. So this, uh, this, the first step here for E1 is the same first step as SN1. Think back, what was the first step for that? It was the slow step with the chlorine just leaving. Okay? It's slow because it's not the best thing to do, because you're going to create, uh, well, what's going to happen to your carbon, right? Chlorine's taking the electron, so you're going to form a carbocation. Carbocations, also known as carbon with a positive charge, not stable. You don't want your beaker, once again, shattering in your face, you know? Okay. So this is your first step. And then you're going to get to here, right? And like I said before, you're going to form a carbocation, so carbon with a positive charge, since the carbon lost the electrons that were in the bond to the chlorine. And then you're going to form also a chlorine minus ion, right? Okay, because he got electrons, so now he's negative. Anyway, so now you have the positive charge. So this is, with, this is what's actually giving your uh, tert butanol the motivation to react now in the second step. Because it, we want to stabilize our carbon over here for the sake of just, yeah, stability. <laughs> All right, so what happens is, if you guys guessed, the electrons here come down and grab the hydrogens, just like before. All right, but you have so many different possibilities now because all the hydrogens are fine. So remember, all these arrows are or arrows, meaning like you can do this, or you can do this, or you can grab this hydrogen over here, grab this hydrogen over here, grab this hydrogen over here, all right? And then you can also grab, I'm just going to draw this one, grab this hydrogen over here, right? Oh, yeah, and sorry, one more thing before. I forgot to draw equilibrium arrows. Make sure you draw these when you do your mechanism. Uh, for each step, you must have these equilibrium arrows. That's why I have them here, okay? But anyway, you grab your hydrogens. There's so many possibilities now. You don't need to worry about if it's anti or sin because if you take a look, now instead of having a leaving group here with electrons, we just have a carbocation. It's basically a carbon with uh, yeah, no electrons, so there's no repulsive force anymore. So your uh, tert butanol can just grab your hydrogen perfectly fine. No, no repulsion force. And then after you grab your hydrogen, hydrogen, what happens to the electrons in the bond, right? They go, the same thing that happened in E2 is going to happen in E1 now. You're going to want to stabilize this positive carbon here by migrating the bonds over to form an alkene or a double bond. It's the same for each of these. Like, I'm not going to draw it or else you guys aren't going to be able to see anything. There's too many hydrogens here. So I'm just going to draw it with this one over here and this one over here. All right. So, and once again, these are all or. So on the test, you want to draw separate molecules. Don't make it so messy like I did over here. I'm just doing this just to save space. Also, my whiteboard is very limited in space. So yeah, Ooh, no choice. But yeah, anyway. Uh, so yeah, you, you do that. Uh, terb terbutanol is grabbing the hydrogen. Electrons are freed up. They can resonate over to form your alkene. Uh, what's your next product going to be? Let's see. All right, so if you grab, if the tert butanol grabs this hydrogen, the electrons of this uh, hydrogen is going to resonate, uh, not resonate, the electrons are going to go over, and you're going to form that alkene carbon carbon double bond, okay? So this is going to be your E1 only product, all right? Because this one, only in E1 can you attack a hydrogen that was originally syn with your leaving group. But these guys here, if you attack any of these three hydrogens, one, two, three, all your electrons are going to go and form a double bond right over here, okay? Sorry, oops. All their electrons are going to form a double bond right here, okay? This is going to go over here, this is going to go over here, this is going to go over here, giving you this product right here. So this one's going to be E2, right, and E1 as well, 
Okay? And the same is true for this case over here, E2 and E1. Because this one here, you grab any of these hydrogens, doesn't matter. The electrons are going to go over here to stabilize the carbocation that you just formed. And then you're going to get a nice stable product. Okay? So that's basically it for the E1 mechanism. Uh, something additional that I'm going to just show you guys now is that uh, what's also being formed in this reaction, right? What else reacted? Your tert butanol. So your tert butanol is now going to be like this. And then what am I missing here? A positive charge. Because its electrons right here were donated away to form the bond with the hydrogen. So it has a positive charge because it lost electrons, basically. So now um, this part's not too important. Um, it depends how your professor explains it. Some professors say that the electrons here from the negative chlorine are going to attack one of the hydrogens here. And then the electrons are going to resonate over here to fix the positive charge. But, uh, and then you're going to end up with uh, tert butanol again after that. So equilibrium arrows, yep, tert butanol again. It's stable. And then you're going to get also HCl from that. But this, in actuality, it's, it doesn't really happen because chlorine minus isn't that strong of a base. It's the conjugate base of hydrochloric acid, HCl, which is a really, really strong acid. So if you're, if, if you're a really, really strong acid, then your conjugate base is going to be a really, really weak base. So it might not have the power to do this. So it, it could be like a water molecule, molecule grabbing it. But this is just, it's not that important for E2, E1. It's just like a little side reaction. So check your notes and see how your professor explains it, OK? All right, so that's basically it for E2, E1. Um, if you like what you saw and you want to keep watching my videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, also, if you found this was helpful, make sure you tell your friends, you know. Let's make Gorgo a little bit more enjoyable. All right, see ya.